Hey everyone, welcome to End User Tools Presents iPad Basics. I'm your host, Jenny Sauer. I am a mobile solutions specialist with the USDA's APHIS PPQ End User Tools Group. I support field operations in mobile data collection solutions, including devices such as the Apple iPad Mini. The Apple iPad Mini has become a common tool for use in mobile data collection. And like every tool that we learn, it has its pros and cons. So it's little quirks that we need to learn and get used to. And it sure does help to have someone show you the way. So that's what I'm here to do today. I'm just thinking back and laughing to the other day my daughter's friend came over and I just casually said, you can go ahead and choose the next record to play. And the look on her face, she was just frozen. So <laughs> some of you may know about record players and some may not. And as you know, new technology, even a record player, is really just a matter of being new until you've tried it a little, and then it's really no big deal. And it's the same with that Apple iPad. So if you have an iPad assigned to you, Feel free to take it out and follow along as I talk you through some of the commonly used tips and tricks and care of the iPad. I will demonstrate it live so you'll get to see my hands and you'll get a really clear view. But if you just prefer to watch and take it in and watch for later application, that is also just fine. So for most of us, probably the first question is, why are we using these things? Why are we changing things up? So some of us are experiencing change and want to know why. Let's start there. So without sounding whiny, you might be thinking, why? <laughs> okay, that was a little whiny. But you might be thinking, why am I taking this training? And why do we use iPads? Why are we moving into electronic data collection? Perhaps you're used to paper and pencil or some other form of data collection out there in the field. Well, why are you taking this training? It's meant to ease new users and also add some care routines for those more advanced users. There'll be some tips and tricks here for everyone. Even if you're used to using an iPad, you'll learn something new here. And then you get to be up to date on how you should be caring for your iPad. And we all stand to learn the basics of care and use here. Completing this course should give us all an even foundation on which to rely. Why electronic data collection? Some of you may have used electronic means to collect data for a few years now actually and still others may be just transitioning from paper and pencil techniques and there's a big push now moving from paper and pencil to the electronic field data collection and the mantra is better data, better decisions. And electronic means does a lot for making that better happen. It reduces time spent in putting written data into electronic sources later. So it reduces that duplicity. It increases accuracy and consistency. So beyond trying to read messy handwriting, there are options for drop-down menus with values to choose from. There are required fields, so it keeps you from submitting empty or blank fields, and default fields that auto-populate. Standard core data fields are being collected now for programs across states that help keep things consistent. And this all enables near live monitoring, reporting, and decision making. How does this affect you? Bragging rights, I'd say. Sure, there's some growing pains and it does involve a little bit of your time to learn, but it's cool use of technology. And although it may include some learning on your part, it means that you have technology backing up your skills. So it means the decisions that are made based on the data you collect are made based on better data at the right time. Better data, better decisions. So we're gonna start simple and begin building our electronic data collection skills as we go. But first things first, I'd like you to rate how you feel about your skills using the iPad now. So let's just take a few minutes and talk about that. We can laugh a little at this guy who seems scared to death of the iPad, but some of us really do kind of feel this way. It can make you nervous using new technology. And it's actually a real term. They call it technophobia. So it's a real thing. And I want to pause and give you a chance to take a quiz. This is the first quiz in this video. It's just one question. It's just asking you 
to honestly assess where you would rate your skills using the Apple iPad. And I'll give you a start baseline for this course. And what I'll do is leave you, instead of the scared guy looking at the iPad, leave you as office superheroes. And I'll pause right there. All right, welcome to iPad Basics Section 2. Here we are back on the superhero. I'm your host, Jenny Sauer. We ended iPad Basics Section 1 asking you to take a moment and honestly assess your comfort level with using the Apple iPad. For some, this will be a review, but hopefully we'll add some details to your techniques. And for others, this will prepare you to use an iPad with confidence. Often those recognized by others as in the know are not even sure themselves. In fact, you might recognize this gentleman with the wild hair as Albert Einstein. He was a German-born physicist awarded the Nobel Prize for Physics way back in 1921. And of course, among other scientific discoveries, he's credited with developing the theory of relativity without a doubt, a brilliant mind. Yet, it's known that in 1955, shortly before he died, Albert Einstein is said to have confided in Queen Elizabeth of Belgium that, and I quote, the exaggerated esteem in which my life work is held makes me very ill at ease. I feel compelled to think of myself as an involuntary swindler. Isn't that interesting? So regardless of how you feel, you're not alone. Even the very best sometimes doubt their abilities. And regardless of how you rated yourself in that quiz from section one, this course will serve to build your confidence and skill in using the Apple iPad. So what will we talk about? Here are some learning objectives. Number one, by the end of this lesson, in fact, this section, section two, you will learn about that first bullet point, iPad care. And iPad basics section three will cover iPad use. Remember when you got your first cell phone? Just think of the iPad as a smartphone with a bigger screen. And instead of having to discover all the tricks to caring for and using your iPad, you have me to show you. Now that you know what to expect, let's get started. iPad care. How is an iPad like a newborn baby? It sounds a little bit like a joke, like from Alice in Wonderland, how's a raven like a writing desk? Well, it's not a riddle. It's a really good comparison, actually. And there's a handy job aid titled iPad versus baby. Let's have a look at it now. What you have here is a handy dandy little chart with check marks on how the iPad and, and a newborn baby really do kind of compare quite nicely, actually. So let's have a look at it. Number one, don't drop them. That's pretty easy, right? Of course, don't drop something of value, baby or iPad. And they both have special cleaning techniques. A baby has a baby shampoo, an iPad. You would use a slightly moistened, lint-free, scratch-resistant cloth. No cleaning solutions at all on an iPad. You wanna keep them dry, out of the sun, out of extreme heat and extreme cold. In fact, Apple says ideally between 62 and 72 degrees. Keep batteries charged, ideally above 50%. Babies take naps, iPads plug into charters. They need updates, babies get updated new clothes as they grow, and iPads get updated iOS systems. We'll talk a little bit more about those system updates in the next section. They also need routine shutdowns. Again, babies every few hours, they take a nap. iPads probably once a week. We'll talk a little bit about that too. You wanna keep them protected. Babies you might strap into a car seat or a stroller, as in the picture on the slide earlier iPads, we keep standard in otter boxes or other protecting cases. These cases protect the screen from scratches and some slight impacts. Of course, these cases don't have internal HVAC, just as a stroller or a car seat does not. So that is where you, as the caretaker, come into play. And maybe this one's a stretch, reduce stimulus. Babies, you reduce distractions for things like maybe when they're eating, iPads, you close the app so they aren't running in the background. You keep them both away from magnetic fields. Okay, babies are not as affected by nearness to a magnet still. You want to keep an iPad away from magnetic fields. And babies also respond well to schedules and routines. 
Routines make your iPad happy too. It helps keep it running as expected, in fact often faster, and extends the life expectancy. So you might want to set routines based on how you use your iPad, but here are some basic ideas around creating a routine for care. If you use it every day, you will maybe want to charge it overnight and store it in a safe spot. Weekly, you would want to check for whether there are approved iPad OS updates. These updates often help apps work more efficiently in the background as well, so that those are important. We want to look to IT to send out approvals for those before we push them out so that we're sure that they are safe and secure to keep your iPad running safely. We'll talk a lot more about that in a little bit. You might want to create a routine for weekly power off or shutdown. I'll show you how to do that as well. And maybe on a yearly basis or at the end of a season, you might want to remove stored items, things stored in the memory of your device that don't need to be there. This could be a photo album, could be maps or surveys, and definitely pay attention to this little starred section at the bottom. Always report issues with your iPad to your supervisor immediately. So don't wait for a, a weekly routine. As soon as something comes up, report it and get things solved right away. All right, we've covered the first objective in my opinion by talking about how to care for your iPad like a new baby and setting routine maintenance schedules. So I'm gonna go ahead give that a little check mark. And I'd also like to pause at this point and test your knowledge from this section. This one just has a few questions to quiz you on these two topics. Baby on board, as a hint, there's only three questions and you're welcome of course to rewind the video to be sure you have all the main points clear. I'm going to pause here and let you take your quiz. Welcome back to iPad Basics. This is section three. I'm Jenny Sauer, your host. In section two, we discussed ways the iPad care is similar to caring for a baby and some important maintenance routines to put in place. And I'm pretty excited to tell you that section three will include a view of my iPad as I take you through some use tips and tricks. I think we're getting to the fun part. Maybe you agree. To start though, let's have a look at our learning objectives for this iPad basics course. You might remember we talked about the advantages to electronic data collection over the old paper and pencil techniques and we recognize some of our technophobia levels that might be there by assessing our iPad savvy levels in section 1 and we discussed care techniques and routines in section 2. That leaves a nice big check mark for our first learning objective and that leaves the second objective, basic use of the iPad. No biggie. I will talk you through some points and then show you what I mean on my iPad here in the studio. Let's start simple. There are two buttons on this iPad that are of particular interest to you as a user. This top one, the sleep wake button, is on the top right edge of the iPad and it does just that. If you press and release, it puts the iPad into sleep mode which saves the battery. After a set time, the iPad will also put itself into sleep mode. Pressing and holding this sleep-wake button will perform a shutdown, which is important as you might remember in our weekly routines. Kind of like a computer restart or shutdown. So pressing and hold shuts it down. You'll get a message on the screen with a slider asking if you want to power it off and you'll have to follow up by tapping and sliding that bar and press and release just puts it into sleep mode. Then down on the face of the iPad on the bottom middle is the home button. This will wake up your iPad if it's in sleep mode and it will ask for a passcode. This home button also returns you to the home screen with app icons laid out similar to this photo here. And the inlet for your lightning charger cord along the edge is just below this home button. You may have to open a little window in your OtterBox case to find it. Possibly second nature to the iPad, similar to many other smart devices, is the use of the touch screen. You can use your finger to tap an icon, which opens it. You can touch and slide to the left or right to view other pages, which include more icons if you have that many apps. Generally, words colored blue are links to other pages. Don't be afraid to test things out. You can always choose to go back or close the application. And we'll get to that a little further in a little bit. 
But first, let's talk about the number one problem for all iPad users. It's a little embarrassing, but it's this dreaded passcode. When you start by opening your iPad up, pressing that home button to awaken it, you are prompted to input a passcode. And the passcode is set when you activate your iPad. So either you were handed this passcode, which you can also reset if you like, or you created it and noted it somewhere for yourself. Don't forget your passcode. <laughs> it's a big pain in the butt if you do. And if you continue trying, and failing, after about five or six tries, the iPad will wipe itself clean. It will assume it's a stolen iPad. So this security measure is in place and you should be aware of it. Instead of letting it go too many times, I know how it goes. You put it in, you think, oh, I fat fingered it. And then you realize, oh, actually I forgot my password, it's this one. Don't keep trying. Instead, use the passcode rule of three. Three tries and you're out, just like baseball. Stop at three and get IT to reset the passcode. All you have to do is open a ticket and it can be reset remotely. Trust me, this is way easier. Here's the information for the CEC help desk, but you also have an icon on your computer. It's the APHIS help desk with CEC to open a ticket. So this is your way out of a whole lot of other trouble. Let's have a look using my iPad and see whether I can take my own advice. I think I remember my passcode. I've removed my protective case from my iPad really to reduce glare so that you could see what I was doing better, but uh, don't do like I do. So that's number one. Secondly, the iPad I showed you earlier was facing in the portrait view. And so you could see it here at the bottom, I've got my home button and I actually have my lightning charger connected. And then up at the top on the edge is this sleep wake button here. And also on the right edge, there's two more buttons, which are usually volume control. The top one is to volume up and the bottom is volume down. But so that you can see my screen better, I'm going to do landscape view. And I'm going to wake up my iPad by pressing this home button one time. You can see maybe hopefully up at the top that I've got already some information on my battery and that I'm connected to Wi-Fi. So I have 100% battery life. I can disconnect this lightning charger and we're just gonna wake it up. So I'm gonna hit this home button which asks me to enter my passcode. And let's see if I can do that successfully. You would think so since I said it. All right, here we go. Another thing, I've got it set to show me everything in the landscape mode, but let's say I wanted to see it or there is some readability issue in this portrait mode. If I just tip it, it moves everything so that I can see it that way. So I'll do that again for landscape mode. And with my hands, I just kind of tip it forward and back and the iPad automatically adjusts everything for me. So if you're a PPQ user, all of these apps are probably going to show up on your device, although it may look a little bit different. These two little white dots at the bottom are showing that there's just this one page and then a previous page. So it shows you what page you're on. So if I just tap somewhere on the screen and move, I can see, is there anything on another page? There's a second page and now you see that white dot move to the first page. So I've got two pages of icons here full of applications. If I tap and pull down from the top right with my finger, I have a little menu here that's a quick menu for putting it in airplane mode. I can see that I am connected to both Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. I'm going to disconnect from Bluetooth so you see that's no longer blue. And if I want to go to airplane mode, I just tap airplane mode. And to exit this menu, just tap anywhere else on the screen or the home button. You might have trouble seeing it, but now instead of a Wi-Fi symbol, I've got a little airplane symbol that tells me that Wi-Fi has been turned off. So that's kind of a nice little tip for the field, this little quick, it's called the control center, quick menu. So I'm going to put it out of airplane mode, and it goes back to allowing me both Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connection, and tap out of that. Then another cool trick that I'd like to show you is how to take a screenshot. And that's done by using the two buttons we now hopefully know pretty well. This sleep-wake button on the edge and the home button. 
and you press them in sequence. So sleep wake followed immediately by home. You might have heard a little camera noise. It holds the photo there of the screenshot you just took for a couple seconds and then it goes away. And where it goes is to your photos app right here. So if you open that up, you can see I've taken lots of screenshots to try to help train people and show them how things work. And this could be very useful in troubleshooting if you need to show someone maybe an error message or something like that that's going on for you. Okay, how do I get out of this? I'm in the Photos application. Well, again, I can press this Home button and go back to the Home screen, but you should also know in the background that Photo app is still open. So in order to actually close that application and stop it from running in the background, you do two quick taps to the Home button. So one, two and there are the apps that are open and running in the background. This is a good way to return to an app if maybe you have a couple of them open and you want to select it and open it back up again. Again, double tap the home button and in order to actually close this application, tap it and swipe up and away. And that's a nice trick for saving some battery life because having things open in the background definitely uses your battery. One application you really need to know about is the settings application. It looks like this little kind of gears moving in the background, and it's got a lot of cool settings and a lot of information that might be super helpful. So in order to select that, you just tap it and open it up. And you can see right away that this is an APHIS device because up at the top we have a little notification and it says this iPad is supervised and managed by USDA APHIS. So it's a remotely managed mobile device and you can tell by that little warning at the top. And that enables IT to help you out when you forget your password or push installs or help you remove applications remotely among a lot of other things. So let's go down this menu quickly. The menu to the left will open menus on the right. And right now, selected as general, but let's start with Wi-Fi. So if I select Wi-Fi, this is where you can see I'm actually signed into my home Wi-Fi, which is called So Far So Good. And if I want information on that or to forget it, I can just touch this eye, this blue eye in the circle, and forget the network or um, check out other information on that network and then go back to the main Wi-Fi screen. And if I want to turn Wi-Fi on or off here, this would be another location and it's just a little toggle. If you touch the button, it goes to off. If you touch that button and it turns green, it goes back on again. Wi-Fi is an important one because when you're syncing data, you're going to need that Wi-Fi connection. Another one that's very important is found on the left under the Privacy menu. You have to scroll down a little bit. See it there with the little hand? If you hit Privacy, Location Services up at the top right is very important. And they're on right now, and they need to be on when you're collecting data. If you want, you can turn the Location Services off, just as you would have with Wi-Fi, but you get a warning on whether you really want to turn it off. And then you can toggle it back on when it's green. And, and that's how the GPS receiver integrated within the iPad can find you. So surprisingly enough, location services locates you. <laughs> Not too tricky, huh? Now, another one that's really useful is this general menu. And within general, you have about. And this allows you to name your iPad, if you like. It tells you the software version, the iOS that you are on. It tells you the model name, the model number, the serial number. And one other that's pretty useful sometimes to IT, scroll down a little bit, for the IMEI number. That's located down a little bit in the general about menu. And in fact, there's lots of other kind of comfort options. If you want to change things such as the display or brightness level. If you want to change um, noises, that's one I like to do. Let's have a look at the display. You can change to bold. You can change um, light or dark. You can change wallpapers. 
You can also change your passcode, touch ID and passcode. You have to first enter your existing passcode and it will step you through the steps of changing it if you like. When you're done, I'll hit cancel there. When you're done using the settings app, again, it's a double click on the home button, swipe in away to close it. We're starting to build some base knowledge here right? And we had a really good look at this settings application and some of the things that can be found inside of it. It's a good place to locate some settings such as Wi-Fi. Cellular data is used for some of us, not typically in the field. It's where your location services are turned on and off and they need to be on for field data collection location services. It's where you might find device information about your make and model. And it's where you would find out whether you are due for an iPad OS update. Again, we rely on the mobility group of CECIT to let us know that these updates have been vetted for use. So we don't want to just willy-nilly go around updating things, but we do want to check here often, and this is where you would check for those updates. And lots of comfort options. Um, and we'll go into a little bit more depth on some of those settings in a little bit but we had a look at some techniques and choosing wallpaper for instance is one of those techniques and choosing a static wallpaper rather than a dynamic one saves battery life. There's a few other basic techniques that help save your battery as well. You want to watch that battery symbol. You don't want to be caught unaware with a dead battery out in the field. We pointed that out right at the beginning. The battery symbol is up in the upper right corner and it's just kind of a tiny little picture of a battery that shows how much of it is green. So you want to watch that. Remember that sleep wake button up at the top edge of the iPad? press and release that and the iPad goes to sleep. It also has a default setting, usually of five minutes, although you can set that to longer if needed. And you can put your iPad to sleep in between projects. Airplane mode, which can be accessed either from that settings application or from the control center. Remember you access that by touching the upper right corner and pulling down. The airplane mode turns off Wi-Fi, cellular data, and Bluetooth all at once which saves a pretty good amount of battery life as well. Again, choosing a static wallpaper rather than dynamic is wise. Making sure you close applications when not in use so that they don't just remain running in the background. And often iPad OS update will streamline applications to run using less battery power. So keeping up with those as they're approved is important. It certainly helps during a long day in the field and also keeps your iPad running at top efficiency for its life. Of course, there are many more tricks to using the iPad for you to discover and share with each other, but hopefully this gets you started. Let's have a look one more time at those learning objectives. So we covered the first one caring for your iPad. And I'd say now we've covered the basics of the second one, basic use of your iPad. So let's give ourselves that second check. Now we've covered a nice set of information about using the iPad. And I'm going to let you exit again to answer four review questions this time. And considering all we've covered today, I think it'd be pretty fair to label you as capable of now learning some more advanced iPad use. Are you up for a couple more cool tricks? Do you all know the term soup to nuts? It's kind of an old American saying that's just kind of talking about a multi-coursed meal which would start with soup and end with a dessert or nuts course. So if nuts aren't your dessert ideal, think of your favorite dessert because here we go. This is the fun stuff. So I've already told you how to take a photo and as a reminder that combined our two favorite buttons. This sleep wake button followed immediately by the home button takes a photo and I'll do it again for you so sleep wake home and it takes a little photo I want to show you one thing with the photo so if we go to the photo app that photo I just took I can open that photo and if I hit edit and then this three dots menu up here I have a markup option among a lot of other things but it gives me all these kinda pens and highlighters and different colors and things and so I can choose one and then I can use it that one's hard to see let's see there we go and I can 
use my hand and say, like, what's that on the photo? I don't understand Outlook. And so that's what we call markup. And you can send then an image with some notes on it if you want to. Secondly, in this control menu pulled down from the top right, I have this little dot, which is the record your screen button. And if I hit that, it'll do a three, two, one countdown. And then I'll have a little alert up here that I'm recording my screen, that little red thing there. So I, it will record everything that's going on on the screen, of course not my hand. So if I wanted to show someone what I was doing, I could, you know, say, hey, I've opened, I open this and I get this message. And then when I want to stop recording, I pull down and stop recording. And those recordings also go to the photo app. So if I go back to the photos app, I can see the difference is that a photo has no timetable, but a recording has a little timetable there. So this says this was a 24 second recording. And so then I could send that if I wanted to when I got back to a Wi-Fi connection or if I connected my um, lightning charger to my laptop and through iTunes, there's a fo folder there. So it gets a little fancy, but that's how you would take a video. How about if it does not exist in your control center? So the control center settings can also be modified in your settings app. Let's have a look at that. Down along the left here, we've got control center as one of our menus. And we see two categories here, included controls and more controls. And uh, you can see I've got screen recording in the included controls. But if I want to take them out, I can remove it and it pops down here to the more controls. So anything in more controls, including screen recording, if you hit the plus sign, will just pop up to included controls and then it'll show up when you pull down that control center. Changing wallpaper to a photo you've taken is another option. So you have a beautiful camera on this iPad and maybe you're out in the field and you take a beautiful picture of some trees or mountains or something. And so among this, if you choose new wallpaper, again, you've got dynamic or stills, but also you have all of your photos here in a little folder. And I've got 23 and some random photos, but let's say I want it to be, um, I want this background wallpaper to be um, a do not disturb sign. So I can choose that. And if I hit set, I have an option of either setting this as the lock screen. So the screen that you see when you have to put in your passcode or the home screen, which is the background when you hit the home button or both. I like to do both. So you would just choose right here and I'm gonna hit cancel because I like mine as it is. But you can even, as you can see, crop, move, and scale these photos. So if you take a beautiful photo and want to see it all the time, that's something you can do. How about changing things like the sleep default and noises and display? Well, the one I really like to change is um, the noises. I hate um, those keyboard click noises that they make, and that's up here in sounds right here keyboard clicks and see I have it off it's almost always automatically on which is green and I turn it off because I don't like to hear a click 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 every time I do that so really explore these menus for things that make your life feel better and make the iPad feel like yours how about in general we talked a little bit about these software updates but where would you go so you would hit the general menu and then you have this set of options here to the right and choose software update and it will automatically check for updates when you hit that button and it will tell you what software update you are on and it says it's running the latest software which is iPad OS which is different from iPhone but here we are iPad OS 14.2 and it says it's running the latest so this is where you would go to check for that you don't want to have it automatically installing iPad updates so you want to make sure that is off so I had it on Whoops, we don't want that. So it's a good place to kind of check on your updates and all of that stuff. All right, one more thing, Wi-Fi. Let's take that to a, a little bit higher level. 
We went to the Wi-Fi menu and we had a look at how to see that it was on or off, that it was connected or not. It's connected at the moment, it's green, and this is my home network so far so good. And if I hit this I, I can get information on it. Let's say that you need to connect to another network. So let's go back one menu here. And there's a list of networks that are nearby and there's also other. And other is how you would connect to a network such as the APHIS network. So you'd hit other, type in the network name, and um, set the right password and security. The other thing you could do is hotspot from your cell phone. And so if you were to turn your cell phone hotspot on, so the, the way to do that is in the settings of your iPhone. And see here we've got personal hotspot. It's off, and all I have to do is turn that on. And there's the Wi-Fi password listed in my phone as well. Now I should see that network show up here on my iPad, and it did. It's just showing up as iPhone. I can choose it, and if I want to forget it, I click on that network and click Forget This Network. So I'm going to turn this off on my cell phone, but that's quickly how to connect to the Wi-Fi from a hotspot on your phone as well. How about if you are handed an iPad and it's someone else's and it's locked and you don't know the passcode and you need to have it reset. Then it's hard because IT wants to know what's the serial number or um, or sometimes an asset tag, which the asset tag is here on the back, and then these numbers here, this 004567 is the asset tag number. But it can be really difficult to figure out how to get that information that they need if it's turned off. So just as a review, shutting down your iPad means pressing and holding this sleep-wake button. So we're going to do that together, just so I can demonstrate. And then we're going to say, yes, slide to power off. So now it's powered off, right? And let's say that you go to try to power it back on, and you're not getting anywhere with it. Here's this Apple open screen. Well, mine is unlocked, but what you would see at this screen is a little eye down here in the bottom right corner on the screen. And when you click that eye, it will actually give you all that information. It will show you the serial number and the IMEI number and the model number. So wanted to show you that too. Okay, so a little bit of the meat and potatoes of playing around with your iPad. I hope that gave you a few more things. The other thing that I wanted to point out is from the iPad now we have Teams. And within Teams, you can join a meeting. And as you can see, I'm joining with the video off, the mic off, but my sound is on, and I'm going to go ahead and join. And once you've joined a meeting, you have the option to share your iPad screen. You can actually share lots of other things. You can also share your camera view. So if you're out in the field and you need to, as long as you have Wi-Fi connection, you can log into a Teams call or Teams meeting, share your video or share the screen. Then everything on your screen will be shared to that meeting or to that call. So all these cool tips help out in the field when you have to talk to someone or when you need to record what's going on or anything like that. The options are here. I'm going to hit OK and I'm going to close Teams. Well, you've all become quite experienced today in the care and use of the iPad, but there's always a point where some of us need a little help. So when should you open a ticket with CECIT? Well, if you follow the passcode rule of three and you've tried logging into your iPad using your passcode three times, remember three times and you're out, it's time to open a ticket with CECIT. If you're having issues with logging into the iPad, Wi-Fi settings, or issues dealing with installing software apps, setting up new iPads, activating them, or configuring them, those are all times to open a ticket with CEC. Be sure to indicate specifically that this is for an iPad device and request that the ticket be forwarded 
to the PPQ Mobile Data Device Group. It'll help you get care fast. If you need technical support or help using the Esri Collector application, follow this hierarchy. You would first go to your supervisor, which you always do every day, right? And then your supervisor might reach out to the local field GIS specialist. And there's also an email, webgis.connect at usda.gov. This connects you to a group of admins, and you're sure to get the right answers there. How about a few resources? We've talked about getting help hierarchy and when to submit a ticket, but PPQ's End User Tools Group is also happy to hear from you and a decent liaison to lots of help if you find that you need a little bit more, or even if you just need to talk something through. Speaking of feedback, your feedback is very important and we consider our training to be an iterative process ever improving to suit your needs. We can only improve with your help, and we need you to tell us what's in those thought bubbles. Please complete the final survey on feedback on this video. Now, while all your thoughts are fresh, this feedback survey triggers a completion email to you and myself, which you can share with your supervisor to show that you completed this foundational training on the iPad. Congratulations in advance of that email. Well done.